Hello, this is the Harp Report. Today I'm going to show you how uh, coal ash is transported by a railroad car to Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City and then it, how it is um, covertly offloaded and processed in some enormous buildings and then how it is pumped onto the flight line so that KC-135 tankers can spray it all over the southern U.S. A uh, couple things I want to mention first is that I wouldn't be making this video since this information is three and a half years old. I've had this information for three and a half years and I've never done anything with it. Uh, but now that uh, my personal hard drive backups have been attacked and pretty much destroyed, I feel it's necessary to get this information out there for safekeeping uh, because the, the best images are from 2015. The modern images now 2018 are very blurry. Another thing, uh, chemtrails are not being used to fix the environment. They're being used to hide the runaway global heating that's now taking place. And this is being done to guarantee the extinction of mankind on this planet. And, you know, this sounds outlandish, but I absolutely guarantee you this is the truth, and it will become painfully obvious in the next couple of years as the climate goes into a runaway heating mode. So, uh, a program like this looks innocent, especially to the people involved in it, but it is actually guaranteeing the death of our planet by, by postponing the only available solutions we have, which is uh, the best of them is ocean fertiliz fertilization. So let's start with a global view. Oklahoma City is ideally suit suited or located to spray these aerosols all over the southern and central, south central U.S. Let's zoom into Oklahoma City. On the southeast side of Oklahoma City, between uh, the 240 and 40 interstates, see that blank area? That's Tinker Air Force Base. The peculiar thing about this air base is it has uh, a bizarre loop, railroad loop, which you can see here. Okay, so I hope you can see my cursor. And uh, so the rail cars come in. It doesn't matter which way they come in, but the guess, my best guess would be that they're coming in uh, in the bottom here. And these, uh, let me zoom in some more. So this is the 28, 2018 Google view, and you can see how blurry everything is. It's a cartoon image. So I'm going to switch now to the 2015 satellite views, which were real uh, satellite pictures. Okay, so this is basically a, a railroad switchyard, is what we're supposed to think that it is, except that there's no trucks loading or offloading. So the mystery is... <coughs> and it's a secure location. This is behind a uh, uh, Air Force security uh, guard post. So um, the question is, what's going on here? And I have an answer for you. Uh, first we're going to notice uh, the, the most, most of the cars are these uh, what they call covered hopper cars. So these covered hopper cars carry uh, dry goods and they carry about a hundred tons each. So these are loaded at the coal-fired power plants and then shipped very, very cheaply by rail anywhere in the country. So they're winding up, a lot of them are winding up here in Oklahoma City and then they get processed in this big building which is shown here in, in the uh, bottom part of the picture. And uh, I took many different uh, screen captures of Google Maps over a several month period so you can see uh, there's a lot of activity going on here. So the question is how does the uh, this very fine fly ash, which is so fine that if the wind hits it it flies away, how do they offload it from these um, bulk carrier cars, covered hoppers, without you know, making a big mess and alerting everybody that something funny's going on. So if you look at the uh, upper central part of the screen, you see a dark stripe here. This is the um, 
at least part of the unloading mechanism which can connects to some underground conveyor uh, systems. Let me zoom in on that. So here we see at this uh, zoom in, I wish I had better shots of this, but this is about as good as it gets. This is says 213, 2013 on Google. But here you can see in, in the middle of the track it's, it's dark, it's black, and in front you have these piles of white material. And in Oklahoma, the prevailing wind is from the southwest, so you have this white stuff, this coal ash being blown in this direction. So it's actually piled up here next to the main track uh, so much that it looks like the track has been buried. But we know from the other pictures that are taken at this time that this is a good track. It's just buried by this white powder. So um, first, you know, how do they cover this? How do they explain this to the local uh, Air Force guys? And I know how they do that. So if our offloading port is here, you want to come up with an excuse that explains to the uh, Air Force workers, who may, may not have a very high clearance, you know, what's this thing for? Where's all this powder going? Well, across the side of the fence. Here we have uh, a secure fence and another secure fence. You have a little concrete batch plant. So that's a way to explain to the workers that uh, where this concrete powder is going. You know, uh, coal fly ash is a good substitute for Portland cement. It's a really useful building material, especially uh, road base, and it can be actually used directly to make uh, cement, concrete. I mean, it is a cement. So let me just look at this batch plant here. So you know, to make concrete, you need three things. You need water. That's this tank here. I hope you can see this. I'm going to blow that up more. Uh, we lose our detail, but this is a water tank. So here's a gravel hopper and a conveyor. It goes into a mixer, an auger mixer. And then your cement truck comes down here, and it's offloaded into the cement truck with another auger. Here's sand. Here's a sand uh, hopper and auger. And here's where your Portland cement or your coal ash goes in. Okay, so the thing is, and I know a little bit about batch plants, that if there was a con underground conveyor or some way to get the, uh, the cement powder from that hole in the track, there would be an underground conveyor or a covered above ground conveyor, and it would come out here in a metal shed and then you have another conveyor that would put it up into a big metal silo. Believe me, I know all about this. <laughs> uh, so there is no connection. There is no physical connection between this concrete batch plant uh, here at Tinker Air Force Base and that hole in the railroad tracks because we should have a metal shed with a conveyor coming up out of the ground which would be, by the way, incredibly expensive and difficult to maintain. So uh, let's go and s go back to the railroad track and see how they do offload it. Here's my graphical interpretation, the red lines, of these uh, hidden underground conveyor systems. And uh, just to show you what happens underneath these cars, the uh, covered hopper car uh, handles dry granular products that flow easily. So it's loaded in the, in the top at the uh, coal power plant and then you simply uh, un unroll these uh, bottom doors and it all flows out. So this line on the left, uh, this is, looks to be obsolete, not used anymore. And how do I know it's there? Because there's very large concrete uh, reinforcement under this road here. And also this uh, industrial building on the bottom here, absolutely huge, like four football fields in size, four stories, 50 feet tall or 60 feet tall, and there's nothing going in, absolutely nothing going in, and the only thing coming out are some, some pipes. So this is the one that's in use now, and let me zoom in. So I wish I had better pictures, but I don't, so anyway. So the hopper cars are unloaded through that gap in the tracks here and to maintain uh, negative pressure 
we have these two incredibly huge vacuum and filter units uh, on the lower right. So these are connected not by conveyor belt but just by an air air duct. The main conveyor uh, system is going to convey the the coal ash over to this. It's it looks like it's a um, high voltage uh, power plant, you know, a transformer yard, but it's not. I mean, that's part of its function, but it has a below ground function. So the the central upper portion here is this uh, transformer switch yard. This is the main power supply for the really huge building complex. We'll zoom in one time. And now what you can see here, now here's a pickup truck and a, and a car. And look how big those are compared to these uh, red pipes that are coming out. So we're supposed to believe that these are the electrical power lines. Those are not. They are ridiculously huge. What those are is the fluidized transport of the coal ash from the underground conveyor system where it then enters this building which does the main processing and mixing. Uh, then the coal ash is oops, uh, stored in this tank. The, the, um, it's now a slurry uh, suspension of very very fine nanoparticles and then be and then we see this white plumbing here going over to this is a cooling this is a um, cooling tower so it is cooled right before it's pumped onto the flight line more details uh, here in a second now this these guys here they look like they are sewage settling ponds but they're not you can see some steam coming off so it's very hot and what do we have in here a white powder white powder or white uh, you know uh, milkshake type of slurry in there so and we have three smokestacks I have bigger pictures let me go dig those up okay so I found my uh, other pictures okay so the uh, transformer switch yard uh, first it's got a high security fence around it which is alright you don't want like deer getting shocked or anything now here's this strange little building and it has a big hole and outside of that hole there's a clearing some kind of materials coming out now if this was just a gravel pad you wouldn't really need this building right here now would you also also you wouldn't need this giant building here all this has in it is you know some circuit breakers and stuff and you can see from the size of the uh, pickup truck and the car that these red pipes coming out are not wires. We don't know what they are. I'm, I'm willing to, to absolutely bet that it's the uh, fluidized coal ash that's being pumped. And that is the way that they move these uh, real fine solids. You inject compressed air and it flows just like a liquid. So this is the industry standard way to move these real fine uh, dusts and even things like plastic pellets. It's called a pneumatic conveying, vacuum and pressure conveying applications and it's just a piping system uh, provided a little bit of compressed air is added. And uh, this is just generic picture of the system. This is not Tinker Air Force Base. The really Another really important thing is you know, in the military they use color coding so that dimwits like me don't get all confused. In this case, this is definitely, this is another part of the Tinker Air Force Base. You know, and it's big office buildings. This is uh, the office complex at the Air, Air Force Base. So here's definitely a cooling tower for air conditioning. And here is definitely water pipes bringing cool air, cool water, into the uh, building for air conditioning purposes and notice the color. So this red insulated pipe signifies that there is a fluid inside so like don't torch it, don't bulldoze it, whatever. So back to our underground conveyor system you can see it's red, it's faded. You know classified stuff is real expensive to maintain so they we gotta let it fade a little bit. Now these uh, 
big old pipes come into the black building and from there is getting processed and the first step in processing this um, fine particulate material is to grind it down to nano size it's already been filtered at the coal power plant that's how they loaded it onto the rail cars so they have uh, <clears throat> there's a patented uh, uh, what do they call it supersonic diamond wheel that spins so fast that it grinds the coal uh, particles into nano sized particles. Uh, sorry, I'm having allergies as usual. Um, so this stuff is brought in and it's ground. It takes a lot of electricity, a lot of power, makes a lot of noise. So they have this off in its own uh, secure building. And I'm sure this black color is designed to signify to the all the workers, you know, that's poop. That's poop, and don't go in there. And then these are supposed to be sewage treatment ponds, but we already know they're not. So you have, and these stacks here are not burners. These are electrostatic precipitators. So they grind the coal ash, and they're going to run it through, um, it's a cone type of filter that spins it, and the large particles go to the outside, the very fine stuff stays in the middle. Well, this process is going to generate some dust and dirt, so they use these electrostatic precipitators. Next, you have the additives come in through this white pipeline system. These white pipelines come in. These are the additives, the uh, liquid base to make up the, uh, the chemtrail mix. And you've got mixing stations and hard, hardly any venting at this point because now it's fully liquid and then it's pumped out to this storage tank and this storage tank is unique because it's got this beige khaki color whereas all the other JP4 and JP8 diesel storage tanks are pure white and notice around this tank there is no um, earthen berm to contain uh, a diesel leak just like is required by EPA Let's look at the real diesel tanks, or JP-4 tanks, at Tinker Air Force Base. So here are the uh, jet fuel tanks, a few of them, uh, toward the north end of the air base. And yeah, they are fenced off, but it's not like high security. And they do have a concrete berm around them. Here, easier to see here. And they're pure white. So that's just signifying that uh, it's, it's jet fuel and if there's any leak they want to catch it before it gets into the dirt and here's a here's the pump and it has open sides uh, so that if there's a fire you know vapors will blow away before they can ignite so these are the JP4 tanks used by the uh, tankers the chemtrail tankers and you can see they're white tanks and there's the concrete berm spill proof uh, fence and then again an open pump shed. So what we're seeing in that beige tank is not jet fuel. There's no uh, leak proof berm, there is no security fence, and wherever the pumping is done it's uh, the building is not you know free to ventilate by having no sides. But just following the pipeline we can see that it goes around this way and then it goes around this corner here so the the pipeline actually goes around this corner here and goes straight to this <coughs> pardon my allergies this cooling tower where then it goes uh, this must be the 2018 that's very blurry sorry about this I've got better pictures in a second this is this is where it's cooled and here's where it's pumped underground five nozzle heads pumped to five stations out on the flight line. So how do we know it isn't plain water? Well look over here, here's your water supply, it's blue. And just like dimwits like me need, I mean I need a color code. You know, hey, oh black is plumbing, black is plumbing, blue, hey that's water. Hey I understand that. I could do maintenance on that because I understand that. Well that's the whole object behind these, these color codes. Okay, I had to go back to the modern cartoon view. 
because I um, I didn't capture a good close-up of this. Uh, so here's our black building. They pipe this chemtrail slurry over, and who knows what temperature it is after the mixing and grinding and stuff. So it's cooled now, and now here's five five heads where it goes down into the uh, ground and is pumped out to the flight line. One, two, three, four, five. Notice the color. It's, it's green. It's light green. And this is the uh, 2018 cartoon view of Google. So where do these wind up on the flight line? Well, guess what? So it looks like it's pumped about a quarter of a mile out to the flight line where you have these fueling sheds. And guess what color they are? They're green. Same green color. So there's one at the top and we got uh, two here, three underneath this tanker, 